Thank you. I appreciate the intro there. Um, thanks for coming to our, our event today and uh, going through uh, the, the journey that Excel Energy and Mindset has gone through. So uh, without further ado, we'll get started. Today, we want to talk about uh, who is Excel Energy? You know, where are they located across the U.S.? Um, Excel Energy's journey with SAP and the EXT team, which uh, I will let Don explain here in a moment. The beginning of the Mindset Partnership. Uh, and then we'll talk about two applications that uh, really influenced a lot of the EXT activity, uh, field time entry and outage restoration. So here I'll hand it off to Don to talk about Excel Energy. Great, thanks Andy and good morning. I appreciate the opportunity to be part of the ASLEG utility event and look forward to everyone's questions and comments at the end of the presentation. Um, first I'll start out by sharing a little background on Excel, our SAP journey and the employee experience transformation program, which was just kicked off last year. As you can see from the map, um, we serve several million electric and gas customers in eight states, highlighted there in red. And I've also included some data on our electric outages, uh, which is relevant later in the presentation since we selected outage restoration as one of our initial field digital transformation use cases. Um, as far as, let's go to the next slide, Andy. Um, this slide shows a little bit about our SAP journey. Um, it started several years ago with full deployment across our enterprise, which was completed at the end of 2017. We've had some transition phases since then that included both sustain and optimize, um, a sustainment optimized period, as well as ongoing enhancements to the applications that were deployed. In parallel, We've been also working on upgrading our hardware and software that our field users have to in, improve their mobility as they're doing their work out in the field. Um, in 2019, our operations organization identified field employee experience as a top initiative and a top priority. So um, Excel currently has a very large customer experience transformation program well underway. And at that time, um, our chief customer and innovation officer, as well as our operations executives made the decision to launch the employee experience transformation program with an initial focus on our field employees. Um, if we advance to the next slide. This basically is our 30 second elevator speech for our employee experience digital transformation program. Research has shown that happy, engaged employees are key to providing amazing customer experiences. And um, I really appreciate that our leadership recognizes that and insists that our digital transformation is driven by the employee experience and not the technology. The focus of our program is to deliver everyday technology conveniences that we're used to in our personal lives and bring that into, into the workplace for our employees. Um, we're taking a whole new approach and bringing our employees into the design phase early in the process. We engage them throughout the development to get their feedback on multiple iterations of the product throughout the development life cycle, because we want to deliver a product that they ultimately own and want to use. And you're going to hear more about that later with our engagement with Mindset. On this next slide, um, you'll see our first use case we launched recently, um, our first field experience, basically what I call our proof of concept, to address a fairly simple pain point that we saw. It was an administrative pain point that our field crews had out in the field, which is entering and reconciling their time on a daily basis. Um, we use SAP Fiori for our time entry, and it was only available on a computer and not all field users had access to a computer or tablet out in the field. So they were either driving back to the office to enter their time at the end of the day. They had instances where they were sharing a laptop, had to take turns logging in and logging out. So it was a fairly simple use case for our first experience. Um, and this is just a screenshot of the current time entry screen. And you'll see the new product later on when Andy talks about that. 
The second use case um, addresses electric outage restoration and the process that our field crews go through during outages. Um, Excel has been focused on the outage experience for customers for years to build out a strong outage ecosystem to keep our customers informed during an outage. It's required building partnerships across the company and enabling customer preferred channels for outage information. In 2017, we made the decision to auto enroll our customers in outage notifications. Um, this ecosystem doesn't come easy as many of you are probably aware and have experienced yourself. And as we continue to refine and improve on it, we've become acutely aware of the importance the employees play behind this ecosystem, especially the field crews and the control centers you can see down there on the left-hand side, as the system depends heavily on their inputs and the information that we're communicating back out to our customers on the status of their outages. So as we dug into this more, it became even more apparent that in order to keep improving on this system, we had to focus on improving the employee's outage experience as well. Um, this next slide shows currently the application that our field crews use to process their outage orders. We use SAP Work Manager today. This is just a screenshot of the application that they use on their mobile device terminals or rugged laptops today. Um, later, again, you'll see a sample of the new outage app that's currently in development together in partnership with Mindset. When we initially stood this program up, you know, we realized we didn't have these design and development capabilities in-house. So that's when we engaged with Mindset to help us with design thinking and delivery of these new field mobile apps. Um, this allows us to really customize the experience based on the role of the field person, as opposed to, you know, kind of a one size fits all approach to the application. And so far the engagement, the feedback from our field employees has been very positive. So with that, Andy, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you, Don, I appreciate that. Uh, I, I figured I'd talk a little bit about who Mindset is and about us. Uh, we have two primary locations in the USA in Minnesota and Denver, Colorado, where I'm located. Um, our aim with our customers like Excel is to, to create exceptional experiences of work with exceptional SAP experts. Um, we've been laser focused on design of software products and solutions, SAP strategy, implementations, integration, uh, all of these different types of, of services, including our own mindset software products. Um, our journey with Excel Energy went back to their implementation back in 2017, where we had uh, a few employees there that were uh, working on business intelligence and analytics uh, to sort of meet those emerging needs that were starting to come out during that implementation time. Um, and in beginning of, I guess, maybe end of 2019, we partnered with Don and the EXT group to focus on user experience for the field, field workers. And as Don said, you know, those, those field workers had sort of technological challenges whenever they were in the field, um, whether that be with uh, using their laptop, their MDTs that are in their vehicle or VPNs, all kinds of things like that. So uh, as part of our design-led practice, we always like to break these down, these complex problems down into simple solutions. And this helps uh, helps the user have a better user experience uh, that there is more focused on consumer grade type user experience that they've become used to, to using. So we always start with design thinking. Uh, this is a method that uh, it did not you know, come to specifically with the software industry, but uh, has been used to create products uh, as far back as the 60s, I believe. So um, this is a method we use to extract business value from our, uh, from our users and try to, to figure out what are these business requirements that, that we're after. And uh, we always start off with the, this inspiration phase. So it's, this is also, I wanna mention, this is a nonlinear iterative process. So it helps us understand users, challenge assumptions, uh, redefine problems and, and come up with some creative solutions. We always start off in the inspiration phase where we empathize with users, where we try to understand you know, what their challenges are, 
Uh, we help, help them define what is the problem really. Uh, we also like to uncover uh, some assumptions that are correct or not. Uh, many times you find out some assumptions that you had about a problem uh, was true maybe a few years ago, but is not true anymore, uh, especially when you have business folks are in the field and they, uh, they come into IT, right? There's, there's usually a lot of assumptions that comes with that. So over time, software changes, problems change, and we're able to uncover that as part of this process. Uh, next, we move into the ideation phase where we brainstorm. Uh, you know, brainstorm is it's a little overused. We use ideate. Um, we come up with different ideas that are to, to come up with different solutions, such as um, maybe there's a process that could be automated that is uh, non human non value add for humans right so if someone's job is they they put together a process and all they have to do at the end of it is push this button maybe we can find out a way to eliminate from that process eliminate that piece from the process by the end of it we put together a prototype and I'll show you some examples of those in a moment um, that we can show these to our users before they actually build something um, so you know, as as time goes on, it becomes more and more expensive to change software, right? The price goes up as it moves into development. Uh, so it's easier to erase things off a of paper. It's easier to erase things off a whiteboard. And, and then uh, as time goes on, the prototype becomes a little bit easier to visualize. You know, you know what you're going to get when you see it. Okay, and then we take that prototype and we test it out with our users with every day in the life type of, of work. So let me show you uh, an example of this. And you may not be able to see all the pictures here, but we have a lot of the, our different field users from Excel Energy in Minnesota and also in, in Colorado. Um, both of these represent different workshops we had that where we talked about outage restoration and we did so with, uh, with time cards as well. So we, we usually start off with the, the design thinking process through here by gathering information. So that's sort of on the left there where you see it says discovery and ideation. We start off with like in the bottom left corner, um, that's actually my design team and I interviewing our, our users and gathering information for them and what the day in the life looks like. Uh, afterwards, we move into ideation where you can see, you know, users are actually standing up at the whiteboard and they're drawing, right? They're actually interactive within this process. And so they're actually designing what, what features they would like to see. Uh, from that, you get a prototype of what will this look like? Uh, what could this look like in the future, right? It says visualizing what you can, what you come out of your brains and making it real with a designer. Lastly, we test it with the users. They give us some feedback. We make tweaks to it until we get agreement on what that looks like. So here is the field time entry application that we have. Uh, it might be hard to see there, but there's an icon on the iOS device that you would tap on. They would open up your, uh, your time card. In your time card, you would have a, a daily entry where you could see you know, what is my total hours for the week, uh, what's my overtime? What's my regular time? I could uh, copy that into another day and then I could submit that. So the benefit of this is also we're able to assign job codes to this. And it helps helps to not only assign time to it, but us realize the costing in SAP that we use against a work order, for instance.
So after that, we've saved 22 hours and 45 minutes for a user in a year. So you can see just the time saved with 22 hours for a user entering time. It's immediately easy to realize the, the cost savings and adding value to what our everyday field users are doing. Our, our next uh, prototype here is outage restoration. And so basically what this is to do is to help our field users whenever there's an outage to see what's assigned to them and their crew. Uh, let's say there, there's an outage, they would get a notification on the device. Uh, once they would go into the notification, they could see on the map where all of the different outages in that area are. Uh, they'd be able to see what's assigned to them. And then they could drill into that outage, you know, have inf information about the SAP work order details that are on there. Uh, it would have information from the, the um, outage management system that would show the customer calls that were there, the different service history that had happened on that device. And uh, they would be able to, to share that with their, their various coworkers there. So <clears throat> one, one evolution point I want to talk about that Excel went through with this is, some of you may have noticed that the previous was a, a Fiori screen. Um, so still using Fiori, still using SAP Cloud Platform, um, but to, to keep that, that similar user experience here. Here, we felt that it was more important to go with a purely mobile, native mobile solution. Uh, so this is a native application that's done uh, that will work on either iOS or Android and uh, uses maps to, to show this. It uses geofencing, which is hard to, <laughs> hard to show in a prototype. But with the geofencing, it allows the, the user to, to change status as soon as they come on site. So if you see where the red pin is, is let's say you got within uh, 50 yards of that location, you would be able to immediately set that, that field worker to on site. Um, once he's on site, that changes the status in SAP. And previously, the user would have had to uh, would have had to remember to, to set that status. So now it's automated. All right, thank you. Uh, for any questions, please feel free to reach out to Don or I, we shared our emails there. Um, I think we'll, we are able to open it up for questions at this time. Yeah, thanks so much, John and Andy. Um, there were some great tips shared about how other companies can overcome some similar challenges when it comes to this. Um, but yes, we do have some time for some questions. Um, the first is, how did you target your mobile applications and what technologies did you use to create them? Um, I can answer the uh, first question. I'll let Andy address the technologies. So. Um, in terms of targeting which mobile apps we wanted to go after, like I mentioned on the field time entry, we wanted for our first initial proof of concept, we wanted a fairly simple use case since it was our first time going through this process. So we picked a simple administrative task. Um, on the outage side, that one has a lot of value, not only to the field employee experience, but also the benefits I talked about on the customer side. If we can provide better, more accurate real time data on what's happening in the field with that customer's outage, then we can communicate better information back to our customers, which is huge from a customer satisfaction standpoint. So that one was selected because of the value, both on the customer and employee experience side. Um, we're also looking at other use cases like that that have high impact to not only the employee, but where we can improve the customer experience as well, while also driving efficiency um, and productivity in the field. Yeah, and to address the question about how do we select technology, um, I think it's it's usually a balance of, um, is it easier to deploy a, a website where you deploy it, deploy it at one place versus a native application that then has to be deployed to every native or every field device that, that you have? Um, and so we we chose to use the website a method for something as generic as the time card. Because in, inevitably the time card could be used by all corporate employees. It could be used on all mobile devices, not necessarily just field. So it was, 
it was a strategic decision to say, okay, let's deploy it somewhere where it's easy for everyone to get to. Uh, we don't need to push an application for just time card on all devices. So this way they could get to it through, through a, uh, a Fiori client. Um, so that was how we made the decision with field time entry. It does come in through the Fiori client. It uses single sign-on. Uh, so the user only has to use the regular password that they're used to. Uh, from there, it signs into all the backend SAP systems. So there's no secondary password or anything like that that you have to do. Um, and we were all able to do that without purchase of any other products beyond the SAP cloud platform. Uh, for the second, we decided for the, the outage application, um, that one we needed a little bit more robust mapping features. Uh, we needed an offline capability because there could be power outages, you know, there to the cell towers that we're, we're working from, right? So um, enabling the, the syncing of the device to get all of the, the information from the cloud uh, and then putting it on the device. Um, we used Google Flutter as the UI for the front end of that device, and it also goes through APIs into uh, into the SAP and other backend systems related with that. Great, thanks for for answering that one. Um, another one we have is how long do you plan on keeping SAP Work Manager? Yeah, I can uh, try to address that one. I mean, we don't have a defined um, product roadmap at this point in terms of a timeline for SAP Work Manager. I mean, given the you know, timeline and end of support that's in place there, you know, we are looking at other options, but I don't think we have a, a defined timeline at this point. We're right now focused on you know, providing some of these custom user experiences while we look at that larger roadmap. Yeah, I would agree with that. The SAP Work Manager is uh, is slowly being uh, deprecated, so um, we're just taking pieces at a time. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, another one is: Have you been able to keep the engagement level with your users during the design and application build? Yes, actually, that was one area where we were a little concerned because it is difficult to engage with these field employees. I mean, they're out there, they're working, they're doing their job. And um, initially I wasn't sure how they would respond, but it's been actually very positive. They've been very engaged throughout the process, both in the design thinking, as well as providing feedback as they start to see the prototype and see the product developing, they get very engaged and excited. So, so far um, it's been very successful in keeping them engaged. We recently just conducted a virtual design thinking session now with the pandemic and obviously protecting the safety of our critical workers. Um, we're not allowed to do the in-person workshop. So we just held our first virtual design session with Mindset and I wasn't sure how that would go, but actually they adapted quickly to the virtual collaboration tools and, and that actually went really well as well. Great. Yeah, we are definitely living in a virtual world, um, especially, you know, like today. Um, and with that, I just wanted to say thank you both so much for, for still being able to join and present with us today. Um, it's been a pleasure to see both of you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you.